morning. Can you guys hear that? Good morning, Crystal. As you guys come in, let me know where you're checking in from this morning, okay? Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Catherine, Lindsay, good, 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 good. Yes, hallelujah. Yes, wonderful, wonderful. You guys are listening to the amazing ministry of Psalmist Rain. Psalmist Rain is going to be our guest next Wednesday for Worship Wednesday. I need every single one of you to go to the website today. They are in the Atlanta area. If you're close enough to drive, drive. Get here next Wednesday, 7 o'clock. <clears throat> Psalmist Rain is a powerful, anointed, amazing worshiper. For those of you that are, have a worship team that you're connected to, uh, bring them with you, invite them to come and experience just the pure, awesome, wonderful presence of God in worship. This past Wednesday was so just awesome. Uh, I think that sometimes we underestimate the power of being in the presence of God. And so, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So as you're coming in, I just want to encourage you to make sure that you, that you get there, that you make it. Hallelujah, as we get ready to go in. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Let me see who's in here. Very good, very good. I see Miss Valerie. Miss Valerie made it. Miss Valerie was there with us on Wednesday. And it was so intense. It was so powerful. Somebody said that, um, you know, during this time of COVID, we've gotten, you know, we're getting the word. But even when you're watching someone, <clears throat> when you're watching someone, uh, when you're watching someone um, worship online, it's not the same as when you're in the actual uh, presence of God, if that makes sense. Because for some reason, it's very hard for us when we're among our family members or uh, in our home, unless we're like totally by ourselves, sometimes it's really hard to be able to get into that deep, just place of worship. Uh, we're spirit beings. It's really important for us to know that. You have to know that you are first a spirit. You are not first, uh, you're not a body, you're not emotions first. You're a spirit. You're spirit first. And uh, your spirit desires and needs that infilling, that infilling of presence, that infilling of who God is. Okay, that infilling of who, of who God is because you were made in the image of God. And so you have a deep need. Good morning, Willette. You have a deep need uh, for that part of who you are to be filled. You have a deep need for that part of who you are to be nourished. You have a deep need. And so we find people constantly looking for ways to fill that need. They're trying to fill a spiritual need with a natural resource, okay? They're trying to fill a spiritual need with a natural resource. So you find people 
that are trying to drink, they're trying to smoke weed, they're trying to have sex, they're trying to uh, uh, gain popular popularity to be accepted by people, uh, to be celebrated by people. We look for all of these natural things to fix and to feel something that is spiritual. You cannot, you cannot satisfy a spiritual hunger with natural things. You will always, some people do it by eating. Okay, we do it by eating. We do it by uh, jumping in and out of relationships. We do it by buying new things. We do it by getting a new pair of shoes. We do it by trying to get a new house or getting a new car. We try to fill that spiritual void with so many natural things. And the truth of the matter is, is that you can continue to do that, but you will always feel empty. You will always feel empty. And so I really, really believe uh, that God was speaking to Corey in a very, very prophetic way because there is a need in the people of God right now to not just get the word of God. Good morning, Belinda, because we've been getting the word of God. Many of you are with me right here every Wednesday, every Friday morning, every Sunday morning. There are other people that God allows you to eat from and you receive the word uh, from those that you feel connected to in the spirit. But you're missing that place of refreshing. You're missing that place of drinking from the well of the presence of God. You get different things, okay? So for example, when you get the word of God, the word of God gives you faith, okay? When you get the word of God, the word of, give, word of God gives you strength. It gives you faith. It gives you direction, okay? But the presence of God, it's like the presence of God refreshes you. The presence of God removes burdens. The presence of God breaks chains. So if you only want to live in a place of worship, you become addicted to that presence because you need that presence to refresh you and you need that presence to break the chains, but you don't have anything to sustain you on the journey. If you only live in the word of God, it's very possible for you to become uh, religious and for you to become full of head knowledge, but not full of that relationship. You got to have both. You have to be built in the word so that you're strong in faith, but then you also have to be able to designate times to be in his presence. And so I've been telling everybody, I know that a lot of people have been saying, you know, when are we going back to church? When are we going back to church? We have not yet been released to go back to church, but we are through the ministry of the radio station 104.5 opening this space on Wednesdays for no preaching, no teaching, open to all churches. It's not just rape. It's not a rain fire thing. It's a body of Christ thing. And so I really, really admonish you. Come, whatever you have to do, come, come, come. Like I said, Wednesday, next Wednesday, Psalmist Rain is going to be with us worshiping. And she is one of those people that when I sit under, I feel refreshed. Just pure, 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 pure. And so I want to see you there. I want to see you there. Shanique, I bless you today. Renee, I bless you today. Jesse, all the way up on the East Coast. I love you. I bless you. Uh, and let's just go before the presence of the Lord. Father, we thank you, we bless you, we honor you, we love you. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for empowering us. Thank you for healing us. Thank you for delivering us and thank you for setting us free. Father, right now, we just glorify you, we magnify you. We come before you and we just declare, God, that you are everything that we need. There isn't anything in this whole world that we want more than you. And so we humble ourselves before you, O oh God. 
we belong to you. We belong to you. And we bless you, Lord. We bless you. And we thank you, Father. We honor you. And we thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And amen. I want to share this with you guys very quickly. Uh, so Wednesdays, we have Worship Wednesday. On Thursday, we are having um, our women's group that meets on Thursday. And so those are two opportunities to come together uh, for people that want to be able to still congregate. And I wanted to share this with you because many of you love to stay connected with what we are doing uh, in the house. And so you may not know, but this is the book that the women's group is going into. Um, at this time, Michael Todd Relationship Goals. Uh, we have the study guide. We have the book that we are studying at this time. And um, if there's any of you that want to join us on that journey, we're going to be going over this for the next uh, for the next several re weeks. Um, I think this young man is, is very anointed and called by God. I feel like his word is very, very balanced. Uh, I feel like um, he has a word that is relevant to where people are uh, in this season. And I love that he, he doesn't compromise the word of God. He doesn't compromise holiness. He doesn't compromise tithing. He doesn't compromise giving. He doesn't compromise the word of God. And I know that comes from his mom and his dad very familiar with his mom's ministry from when I was a teenager uh, and he comes from a legacy of, of holiness and righteousness and so if you want to join us on that journey you're able to do that as once again the sun is pouring in through my through my window all right father we thank you first John 4 verse 9 through 11 says this is how God showed his love among us he sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we ought to love one another. That's 1 John 4, verse 9 through 11. Romans 8 37, 38, and 39 says, No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither the present, nor the future, nor any powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Isaiah 54 10 says, though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. I just want to remind you of his love, the love of God, the love of God, the love of God towards you is amazing. The love of God towards you is eternal. The love of God towards you is, it's filling, it is necessary, it's powerful. And I think that a lot of times we focus and it's funny because with us even talking about this this book, Relationship Goals, and we were in the women's group last night, um, you know, just going through some of the points of the first chapter. And it's very, very clear that the world and the culture wants to, wants to give us a blueprint of what love is. And I just want to remind you, the blueprint that the culture and the world is drawing out for you and for me regarding love is not accurate. 
it's not accurate it's not real it's not accurate it is conditional um, what the culture is drawing changes weekly it changes monthly but the love that God extends toward us it is eternal it's like his word it's unshakable it's immovable it is constant and if there is a love that we should focus on if there is a love that we should connect to every day if there is a love that should make us feel valuable if there is a love that should make us feel like we have worth and like we are important it should be the love of God I spoke to you on Wednesday and I said grateful people are happy people because God just had me focusing on gratitude he had me focusing on not comparing just teaching my daughters like don't compare your journey to anybody else's journey don't compare what you have going on to what other people have going on or don't compare what you have to what other people have you 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 have to be able to just focus on you focus on what God is doing in your life and so when I think about today about the love of God and, and what even got me into that vein was listening listening to uh, to Psalmist Rain's song about the love of God and she just kept singing your love your love and she you know it removes doubt it calms fear when we understand that we're living in the overflow of the love of God, it changes something. I am living in the overflow of the love of God. So even in my imperfections, God loves me. Even in my struggle, God loves me. Even in the times that I doubt him, God loves me. Uh, even on the days where I don't believe him like I should or I don't run my race the way I should he loves me even on the days that I that it's hard for me to forgive someone he loves me on the days where I'm just tired and I'm exhausted and I say God I just I just I don't have it in me today he still loves me his love is not conditional his love is not based on whether I met the mark on this day or that day his love is constant his love and his love his love is not based on did I serve him today or not does he deserve my worship yes does he deserve for me to serve him and honor him oh my gosh yes absolutely but my point to you is that his love is not based on my performance God loving you is not based on your performance God loving you is not based on whether you were perfect in your actions the Word of God right here let me go back to it in 1st John 4 verse 10 says this is love not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son. See, that's the part that we don't understand. God loved me first. God loved me first. Father God, we send the word of God to Selena Reyes right now. And I pray, Father God, that the pain that she's ex experiencing in her body right now, that she would be healed. I curse every demonic spirit of pain that is upon her. Father God, heal her body. Restore her body. I send the word of God. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, touch her body. Heal her now. Completely. That every part of her body that is affected by this disease, that it would be canceled and that it would be gone. All of us come together. We set our faith together for this miracle. In the name of Jesus, we pray. 
Amen. Amen. I see Kimberly, Kimberly on the chat saying, the love of God never changes and it never fails. See, we don't, we don't understand that he loved us first. God loved me first. God loved you first. Before you could say yes to Jesus, God loved you. Before you could say, Jesus, be my Lord and Savior, he loved you. Before your first sin, he loved you. But he knew that first sin was coming. Before your first lie, he loved you. Before the first time that you uh, were involved in fornication, he loved you. And guess what? When you committed the sin or when you committed the crime or when you committed the fornication or the lust or, or you lied or the adultery or whatever it is that you've done in your life, even what, wow, even while you did it, even when you were laying there with that boy doing what you were not supposed to be doing, even at that moment, God was fully present in that moment. God was watching you as you did it. And while you did it, he stood over you and kept saying, I love you. I love you. I love you. Come back to me. I love you. I'm here for you. I love you. I'll never leave you. I will never forsake you. I love you. And even while, even while you were in the deepest moment of your sin, he was there with you in that moment, declaring his love over you. I don't know why we keep letting the enemy convince us that God is not with us. I don't know why we keep letting the enemy say to us that we're not worthy, that we're not valuable. I don't know why we keep convincing the enemy, I mean, allowing the enemy to convince us that That God is not present in our situation. He is present. He is with us. He loves you with an everlasting love. And I don't know who it is that needs to be reminded of this today. But be free. Be free to love yourself as God loves you. Be free from shame. Be free from the guilt of your past and of the sin that makes you feel like you're unworthy. And be free to just live in the love of God. Be free to live in the love of God. Be free to live knowing that you're worthy you are worthy. You're worthy of his love, that you are precious, that you are valuable, that you are beautiful, that you are, that you have so much value in the eyes of God. I was listening to Papa uh, preach and minister, and he was saying, your value is, is based on the price that was paid for you. The price that was paid for you is literally priceless because the life of Jesus, you can't say, oh, that was worth a million dollars. You can't say that was worth a billion dollars. You can't say that was worth a trillion dollars. The blood of Jesus and the sacrifice of Jesus is priceless. And that's, that's, the price that was paid for you. So the value of something 
It's based on the price that was paid for it. There's no price. There's no amount that you could attach to what Jesus did for you. And so I just declare over you today. I just declare the love of God over you today. And I declare that everything that blocks you from understanding his love, that it's broken. If that means that you're seeing the love of God through the glasses of your experience, that maybe you're not able to understand the love of God because of the way that you have been broken by people that should have loved you, I just ask that the Holy Spirit would destroy all of that baggage and that you would be able to just really grasp and that the love of God would become so real to you that you would literally just be transformed by the understanding of his love. And so, Father, we thank you today because sometimes we forget the simple things, but the most important things. It's been sung to us since we were children. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Why, why we forget, I don't know. But then God comes with his Holy Spirit to just remind us. And so I hope that you are full of joy in this reminder today. That God loves you fully. That God loves you completely. That God loves you eternally. And that you are so precious to him. You're precious to him. I pray that you have a blessed day. I pray that you have an amazing day. I pray that you would just be full of joy today. Enough, enough with the living in sadness and frustration and depression and all of that garbage. That's not who God created you to be. He created you to live in his love, to live fully in his love, okay? All right, you guys have a blessed day. Um, I want to see you Wednesday if you would live in the Atlanta area. I need you to bring at least five people with you. Go to the website right now and RSVP. We only have it open for a certain number of people. We're still being COVID conscious and so bring your mask. You can uh, spread out in the sanctuary and um, it's going to be heaven on earth. Literally. You need to be healed? Come on. Depression has been on you. Come on. You know someone, somebody that needs a breakthrough. Come on. And so go to the website, rainfirechurch.org. Make sure you RSVP to be with us on Wednesday. Worship Wednesday. It is, it, it's just, it's, it's unexplainable. There are no words. There are no words. And you don't want to, you don't want to hear me talking about it next Friday and be like, man, I should have gone. Don't miss it. Okay. If you feel uh, compelled to sow your tithe and your offering today into this ministry. God has blessed us. God has been with us. God has been faithful even throughout COVID. God has allowed us to do some amazing and wonderful things. And so we honor you and we bless you for being obedient to the voice of God in your giving, for uh, being uh, a vessel that God uses to bless this ministry. And so I'm gonna share with you our ways to give very quickly right there you see you can go to the website rainfirechurch.org all the ways to give are right there a uh, cash app rainfire atl uh you can text the keyword rainfire to 77977 or you can mail a check p.o box 6984 douglasville georgia 30155
for. And so uh, if the Lord places it on your heart uh, to sow a special offering for, um, for, the build, for the building today, there are three major things uh, that we have a vision to do right now in the sanctuary. We just got the quotes um, yesterday and today. And so if you want to be a part of that, I'll share more about that as we kind of pull the trigger to do those things. Uh, but we received three quotes. Uh, one of those quotes was for, I think, $3,200. The other quote was for $2,500. Um, the third one, I have to look at it. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, but these are things that would make a major, major difference in the sanctuary. And we want to be able to get those things done before we go back to church on Sunday. And so if the Lord uh, places it on your heart to stand with us for those three uh, projects. Um, I encourage you to be a part of that. I learned a long time ago that <laughs> rain fire is not the work of uh, Corey and Joanne. Rain fire is the work of God. Rain fire is the work of, of the Holy Spirit and he will provide for what he needs. And one of the things that I learned uh, from my dad is to share with the people what is happening. Um, you guys that have been in the building, you guys know that we have redone the bathrooms. We actually expanded the bathrooms. We had, uh, at first we had porta potties, then we had a bathroom, two bathrooms that had one stall each. We converted those bathrooms, and now those bathrooms that had one toilet each now have three toilets. We converted the whole uh, front half of the building, which was at least 10,000 square feet during COVID. Um, so now we have a cafe. Now we have a barber shop where we're going to be doing outreach ministry through that barber shop. Um, we've been doing gas giveaway with outreach, um, and we have another gas giveaway coming May 27th. So pray for that. Uh, and so we've done a lot in a short, short period of time. And so these next three things are going to be um, just really amazing to take the excellence in the sanctuary to a new level. And so, as I said, uh, the first quote that we got. Um, to upgrade the our, our stage is at about 3,200 and then there's um, some woodwork uh, and some structural things that need to be done that that quote was 2,500 so however the Lord leads you uh, we just we stand together and we uh, we know that this is God's work and so when you see things happening when you come into the building and you see this and you see that you can say you know this is the house that we are building with God. And that's what it is. It's we. It's not Corey and Joanne, but it is we as the family of Christ. And so I love you. I bless you. Thank you for standing with us. Thank you for uh, moving at the pull of the Holy Spirit to do, do to get these things done. Okay? Be blessed. Have a great day. And I'll see you Sunday morning at 11 a.m. right here. Uh, we just love serving God, and we know that we're growing together. Okay? Enjoy your day. I love you.